Dear friends, may I declare the traditional session of the International Friendship Club open. Friday is the day of the English section. And judging by all this, they are going to have something very interesting today. I hope so. On the agenda, talk on Great Britain and admission of new members. We are lucky to have Ivan Petrovich Fyodorov as our speaker today. I believe everybody knows him. He has just returned from his tour of Great Britain. So he has a lot to tell and show us today. Please, Ivan Petrovich. Thank you. Well, to begin with, I suggest an informal talk. It will be better for practice. So any questions or comments are invited. Let's view some slides first. I've got a question. May I? Uh, what's the difference between Great Britain and England? Let's begin with a the map then. You see, the British Isles consist of two large islands, Great Britain and Ireland, and about 5,000 smaller ones. Great Britain includes England, Scotland and Wales. Great Britain and Northern Ireland, or Ulster as it's known, form the United Kingdom. The greater part of England is lowlands. On the other hand, Scotland and Wales are mainly mountainous areas. And all this you could see during your trip? Not quite. I'll tell you the truth. Actually, our group travelled for about two weeks. But I'd spent about two months in the library. I did quite a lot of reading on the subject. Books about England, Ireland, Scotland, books on history, geography, economics, and politics. Did everything come in useful? Certainly. That's a helpful hint to all of you. Read as much as possible. It will come in useful sometime. And now about Great Britain. Please. had our first glimpse of Britain at Heathrow Airport. Today, Heathrow is one of the largest airports in the world. It's served by nearly 70 airlines. Planes arrive and depart every two minutes. Buses run at frequent intervals. Is Heathrow far from London? No. The journey from Heathrow to London takes about 30 minutes by bus. That is if you don't get caught in a traffic jam. London, the capital of one of the most highly industrialized capitalist countries of the world. The seat of the government. The home of millions of working people and an ancient city the centre of British cultural life, famous for its historical sites and tourist attractions. And what places did you visit? I'm coming to it. Besides London, we went to Preston, Liverpool, Sheffield, Coventry, Newcastle, 
We also went to Scotland. And what impressed you most? If you mean landscape, the answer is Scotland. But I'll show you Scotland later. Let's start with Preston. Are you ready? Preston is not a very large town, but it's developing fast today. In Preston, we visited the British Leyland Motors Works. 55,000 workers are employed here. They produce cars and buses and lorries. 95% of all the cars that run on the roads of Britain are made by British Leyland Motors. firm exports into a hundred countries. Especially popular are Leyland double-deckers. Now Preston is in Lancashire, which is a traditionally textile region, but today it's a fast developing area for the aircraft and car industry. Now it's also one of the chief areas for chemicals, electrical engineering and electronics. cities are there in Lancashire? Well, there's Liverpool in the first place. Liverpool, you know, is the largest city of the region. It's Britain's chief port of export, the greatest centre for processing imported foodstuffs and raw materials. After Liverpool, we travelled through the famous Black Country, the region for metallurgy and heavy industry, the old coal mining area. Then we went to Coventry. Coventry is also an important centre of the aircraft and car industry. In World War II, it was badly damaged by the fascist bombs. Now it's been completely reconstructed. The centre of the Midlands is Birmingham, an old manufacturing town. And after that, we visited Sheffield in Yorkshire. Which is famous for its steel. Absolutely right. In Sheffield, they produce all kinds of wares. Knives and forks, all kinds of machinery, even aircraft and missiles. But the traditional industry in Yorkshire is woolen textiles, including knitted goods. Agriculture in Great Britain is mainly where the lowlands are. Sheep are a part of an English landscape. The traditional British animal for breeding is sheep. But mind you, the main stock of wool comes from Australia and New Zealand. Dairy farming is widely practiced too. I understand the quality of the produce is high, isn't it? Yes, both in industry and agriculture, emphasis is laid on quality. As England can't compete in mass production, it's the only way for the country to survive. also went to Newcastle, a large industrial centre in the northeast of England. It ranked second in the country after the Glasgow docks and shipbuilding yards. The working class of Great Britain. Workers like these can be seen in the east end of London and the factories of Manchester. Newcastle is one of Britain's main ports of import. Non-ferrous metals and oils are imported here. And still, what impressed you most? I may sound trivial, but I liked London most of all. So here is my home movie. <laughs> 